With cameras like the Blackmagic Pocket, Cinema Camera 4K, GH5 and Zagcam E2, there have never been more small, affordable filmmaking camera systems to choose from. However, one area lacking competition is the Micro Four Thirds Cine Lens market. But today, we are looking at a new contender, the Miki Cine Primes. These little lenses are available in MFT, E or X mount. We currently have a 16 mm and a 25 mm available, but Miki have informed us that they are also working on a 12 mm, 35, 50 and 85 mm, all with a T2.2 aperture. They may remind you of the Vega Primes, and for good reason. The housing is almost identical, so the build and mechanics feel great. The 200 degree focus throw is a decent length for shooters moving from handheld solo operation to using more traditional follow focus systems. The focus and iris have a decent amount of resistance and are consistent throughout their range. The 16 mm weighs in at 650 grams and the 25 mm comes in at 557 grams. They are both roughly the same size also, both having 77 mm front filter threads and measuring in at around 10 cm with matching gear positions. They also have a very similar close focus of 20 centimeters on the 16 mil and 25 centimeters on the 25 mil. We didn't get much time to test these lenses, but I decided to take them on a trip to Richmond Park one weekend to see the kind of images that they could produce. I shot handheld using the Zcam E2 and processed the clips in Resolve. These lenses can produce some very pleasing images and handle really well on the Z-Cam. The main downside I noticed was the amount of chromatic aberration present on the extreme contrast areas. Let's move on to some more scientific tests. Because of the short focal lengths, it is difficult to throw out the background to get bokeh, but when you do, it can get rather busy. On both lenses, you can see the aperture blades starting to form the shape as soon as you stop down. The 16mm bokeh is quite dirty with heavy edge definition. This is the same as the 25mm, but I would say the 25mm renders bokeh a little nicer than the 16mm. Flare is very well controlled on these lenses. Even when shooting wide open, the 16mm only has a tiny bit of veiling glare and a small flare. At T28, veiling glare is still present, but the flare has gone and be replaced by starring around the light saw. At T4, this is very similar with the starring slightly more defined. The 25mm is a very similar story with only a little bit less veiling glare. Breathing on the 16mm is extremely well controlled. However, on the 25mm, it's not as good, which you can see here. We couldn't do our regular coverage tests because our coverage camera doesn't have the ability to mount Micro Four Thirds lenses onto it. But you can see from our focus chart tests how well they cover MFT sensors. Some of the focal lengths are actually designed to cover even larger sensors. These are available in E or X mount for that reason. These lenses are surprisingly sharp. Wide open, the 16mm resolves well, but does improve in contrast as you stop down across the frame. CA is also apparent wide open, and as expected, as you stop down, it is reduced. The 25mm is a similar story, but I would say has more CA wide open, which again is improved when stop down. When it comes to distortion, the 16mm suffers from a little bit of barreling, and the 25mm suffers from a tiny amount of pin cushioning. But overall, this isn't too bad. So, in conclusion, the first two in the Mickey Seni lens set are incredibly impressive for their price point. They are compact, sharp, and for the most part, pretty clean lenses, so I could see a lot of owners of the Pocket 4K and Zcam E2 gravitating towards these affordable primes. Let us know what you thought of the lenses in the comments below, and if you like this video, please hit like and make sure you're subscribed.